In the headlines, Jack Dio exposes Granger for misleading the nation on agreement made during their meeting. Private Sector Commission says GCA must be ready for snap elections. Caribbean braces for dengue fever outbreak. And in sport, Guyanese cricket enthusiasts upset over lone Guyanese election in West Indies test squad to play England. These and more right now in this our Thursday, January 17, 2019 edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Lashona gomes Cornelius. Thanks for joining us. Opposition leader Barajagio has exposed President David Granger for misleading the nation following a meeting between the two top officials. Opposition leader Bar Jagdio today chided the president for allegedly misleading the nation hours after the two met to discuss the way forward following the December 21 no confidence motion in the National Assembly. Jagdi accused the president of disseminating information that was not agreed to by both parties. Since then, they've been on a spin mode that one, we had an agreement about the functioning of the government, the executive branch, and the legislature that they will function as per normal, that's not true. Two, that we have dropped our call for the resignation of the government, that is not true, as you have seen here. And that we, that somehow we are contemplating shifting the deadline, deadline and that pending the readiness of GCOM, that's a new factor, the deadline would be shifted. The deadline is a constitutional deadline, a constitutional deadline. The opposition leader maintained that the government should remain in place but obtain a caretaker role. He reminded that the government must resign and act in accordance with Article 1066 of the Constitution. The president believes that the event of the 21st of, of December did not take place. Nothing happened. Although, right now, that... The speaker said it's carried. The speaker refused to review the decision. The legislature has spoken. The courts now have indicated that they are not giving a conservatory order which would have stopped the deadline, the, the timeline ticking. And yet he operates. The president is, as I said before, in La La Land. He says the government is legal and must govern without any limitations to its authority. More importantly, Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire will hand down her ruling on all matters involving a confidence motion by the end of January. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. 
Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design Ground Floor City Mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful maro, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. The Opposition People's Progressive Party is confident about a victory whenever elections are called and has avowed that they will repeal every piece of legislation the government passed after the December 21 confidence motion was passed. During a news conference today, Opposition Leader Bar Jagdi told reporters that the party will not recognize any policy put forward by the government after the December 21 vote. The party already formally wrote 30 international organizations to alert them about the possible challenges that might occur during this period. He made it categorically clear that the opposition will not return to parliament unless there is an agreement on election matters. That we are now recognizing its validity. So that means upon new government emerging in office, you would have to either repeal it or if or use any other provision that is lawful to argue that they were not validly passed or signed by the president. If he is in a caretaker responsibility now, whether he still has the authority to sign bills now, which is new. So that, but definitely um, a review, a total review of that bill and possibly reenactment. Re he said the party will not have the 90 days period extended as elections must be held by March 19, 2019. The opposition leader said beyond the 90 days timeline, the country will be in unsettling water as the government will be in unconstitutional territory. I am, I'm sticking with our constitution. Right now I'm sticking with our constitution. I can't go wrong there. If I say I'm upholding the constitution of Guyana, that we all, that's our supreme law. I'm sticking with that. I'm not going to speculate at this time about any extensions. This government has a way of spinning everything in their favor. They're creating this air of normalcy as though nothing happened on, the, on that night. Elections are expected by March 19 unless otherwise decided by two-thirds of the National Assembly. Sandy Ramutar. For MTV's News Update. Despite the confidence motion matter is before the High Court, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu has come out saying that the government will remain in office while adding an administration's term is five years. The Prime Minister affirmed that there is nothing preventing his government from remaining in power. We are saying to the world uh, that we intend to remain in, in office because there is nothing that prevents us from staying in office. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu. The assertion of Nagamutu, who is performing the functions of the office of the president, comes at a time when the court is dealing with three cases involving the December 21 no-confidence vote. In spite of the absence of the ruling by the High Court, the PM is affirming that they will be clutching onto power. The ruling of the Chief Justice will allow for the determination of whether or not snap elections must run off. The court will decide whether the 33 constitutes a majority in the National Assembly, whether recall the government parliamentarian Charandas Prasad's vote must be counted, owing that he is also a citizen of Canada, and whether the government must resign. The decisions will be handed down before February. The refusal of the government to resign 
has caused the opposition PPP, legal luminaries and other rights activists to condemn the government as power hungry. Charandas, who was then an MP and an AFC member, voted against his government when the confidence motion was tabled. After his vote, which has a bitter taste in the mouths of government MPs, he was recalled as a parliamentarian and expelled from the AFC. Charandas fled Guyana and is presently in Canada, but vowed to return home when a date for elections is set. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. As the chairman of the GCOM remains on sick leave, the private sector commission has made it clear that the commission must be ready to hold snap elections in the 90 days prescribed by the constitution. The chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission, retired Justice James Patterson, remains on sick leave and is yet to meet with the parliamentary chief whips. That meeting is for the three year to discuss the commission's readiness to hold elections by March 21, as predicted by the constitution. This was discussed and decided by both the government and opposition following a high-level meeting on January 9. Pursuant to Article 1066, fresh elections are to be held within 90 days of the successful passage of a vote of no confidence against the government. That motion was passed on December 21. The private sector commission in a statement to the press reminded that unless otherwise ruled by the court or decided upon a motion passed by two-thirds majority of the National Assembly, the Ghana Elections Commission must be fully prepared to conduct elections within this period of time. The private sector commission has called upon the chairman of GCOM to assure the nation that the commission is so fully prepared. Meanwhile, the Alliance for Change is calling for fresh house to house registration, claiming the current list is laced with deceased persons while others that are now of age need to be placed on that list. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. You're watching MTV's News Update. When we return, Caribbean braces for dengue fever outbreak and AFC vows none of their MPs holds dual citizenship now. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bel Air Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated, we are your source for security. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 Auto Value New Road Freedom Hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara.
A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. Slimjet presenting Coleomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick, and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac only at the Slim Jet. City Mall, second floor. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. Guyanese are to be on the alert as the Caribbean Public Health Agency has recently indicated that there could be a possible severe outbreak of dengue fever in the region. According to the Caribbean Public Health Agency, the last time the region faced a severe form of dengue fever was back in 2009. Since then, the region had been hit with the mosquito-borne illnesses of chikungunya and the Zika virus in 2014 and 2016, respectively. And as of recent, there was an outbreak of dengue fever in Jamaica, where elevated levels has raised further concern for the region as a whole. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARPA, is therefore advising countries to implement enhanced measures to reduce mosquito breeding and prevent the spread of disease. As such, individuals are advised to keep their environment clean, drains, pipelines, and other open containers should be kept clear of stagnant water. In addition, there should be proper management of storage containers like drums and water tanks and disposal of used tires. The dengue carrying mosquito, the Aedes aegypti, lays its eggs on the walls of water-filled containers. Once laid, the eggs can survive for months. The most effective way to avoid becoming ill from viruses spread by mosquitoes is to prevent mosquito bites. Research carried out by CARFA and the Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, show that drums and tires are the main mosquito breeding sources. As the matter of dual citizenship held by former AFC parliamentarian Charindas Brissot is being investigated, the Alliance for Change has come out saying none of their MPs holds dual citizenship now. There is an ongoing matter in the High Court involving expelled AFC Member of Parliament Charindas Prasad about his dual citizenship. This came after he voted in favor of the opposition to pass the confidence motion which dethroned the government. Owing that the matter surrounds the Prasad, who was an AFC MP, the party today said none of its parliamentarians swore allegiance to another country. The AFC wishes to advise that none of its 11 MPs has sworn allegiance to any foreign state. Ten of the party's MPs are citizens of Guyana only. However, AFC executive member Catherine Hughes noted that business minister Dominic Kaskin was born in the United Kingdom but claimed the law does not apply to him. Uh, minister Dominic Gaskin was born in the United Kingdom but is a citizen of Guyana by descent. The issue of renouncing citizenship does not apply to Guyanese who were born in another country. Therefore, Mr. Gaskin constitutionally sits as a duly elected MP without any hindrance or issue. More so, the AFC claimed that prior to entering Parliament, all of its intended parliamentarians were asked about dual citizenship status. The party claims that Prasad would have lied. That information was not brought to us at the point in time when we selected 
we appointed our MPs, yes. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Retired Justice Charles Ramson has condemned the government for placing a former Guyana Defense Force member to head the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. He affirms that a retired brigadier is responsible for the woes of the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, claiming he is a square pig in a round hole. Despite a brigadier retired George Lewis has been placed as the chief executive officer, of the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation for almost two years, retired Justice Charles Ramson has now come out stating his discontent in the alleged militarization of the public hospital. The retired judge believes that the government is placing retired GDF officers into the public system, a claim that the former General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, Clement Rohe, has been stating. Justice Ramson states that the retired brigadier is a square peg in a round hole. The hospital is run by some man who's a former lieutenant colonel. They removed a man who was well equipped to do it and put in Solomon. No wonder there's so much trouble at the public hospital in Georgetown. Attempts to contact the CEO for a response proved futile. Guyana's president is a retired brigadier and the state minister Joseph Harmon is a retired lieutenant colonel. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Minister of Social Cohesion Dr. George Norton announced that a national youth policy will be revised to prioritize the developmental needs of Guyanese youths. This revision has been ongoing since the coalition took office in 2015, and there, despite several commitments to begin implementation of the document. According to the Minister of Social Cohesion, Culture, Youth and Sport, Dr. George Norton, the national youth policy that was tabled and passed in Parliament in 2016 will be going through some revision. According to Minister Norton, the policy is expected to return to Cabinet only after a memorandum of understanding is completed by an expert team which comprises of both UNICEF and UNFP consultants for presentation. The policy itself would have indicated that it has to be revised ever so often as things change and, and um, you know, policies can change um, per se, that is, they complete the actual um, document and so on, depending on the direction in which the government is going. As a result of that, we are planning to take, um, to do a presentation to cabinet after a cabinet memo is accepted and, um, and make some recommendations for changes. It is hoped that a policy will fast-track youth development. The minister addressed some of the main areas of focus which the revised national youth policy will be placing emphasis. We also have to cater for those who are not on the education. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got some priority areas that we hope to, uh, to focus on in 2019. And this would be, for instance, um, we want to resuscitate or we want to establish the National um, Guyana Youth Service Again, the National Youth Service. We want um, the formation of the Guyana National Youth Council uh, so that they can be uh, a, a part of the, the Regional Youth Council. We want to develop the National Youth Empowerment Action Plan, which is there mentioned in the National uh, Youth Policy. The National Youth Policy seeks to define and develop a bold and realistic framework important to the critical action plan for social, economic, culture and academic upliftments of youths in Guyana. Over the last two years, statistics provided by the Ministry of Social Protection indicated unemployment among young people has increased by 6%. Suicide and crime also increased and the number of those youths incarcerated fall within the age categories of 17 and 35 years. Following the findings by the Guyana Fire Service that it was an act of arson which caused a devastating fire at the Diamond Secondary School Administration building, the Guyana Police Force is said to still be investigating the matter. 
The fire had destroyed the school's entire administrative building, which had housed the school's library, the offices of both the head and the deputy headmistress, the staff room and the information technology lab. Being one of the first on the scene during the wee hours of Monday, December 24, ranks from the Guyana Fire Service were able to speedily quell the fire from spreading to other parts of the school. The Guyana Fire Service had concluded that the fire was purposefully set by someone. This incriminating finding was then divulged to the Guyana Police Force. Three weeks on, that investigation is still ongoing, according to Commander of A Division Marlon Chapman. During a telephone interview with the headmistress of the Diamond Secondary School, Lesmin Collins, this newscast was told despite the fire, efforts are being made to have the school function as per normal. Collins had also indicated that a possible rebuilding of the said department is being discussed at the level of the Ministry of Education. Um, the teacher's office would have moved to a classroom and um, they are in the process of cleaning up. Yes, we did have that meeting and a action plan was put in place. Well, it, it, is, the, it, it is being wise, but um, I guess later on they will come up with something um, stronger than that. No confirm something as to who will build and what will build. The Diamond Secondary School has a student body of about 690 students and 45 teachers. Here is Celine Griffith with your court roundup. <music> A man was today remanded to prison after he appeared before Magistrate Leron Daly on a simple larceny charge. Noel George pleaded not guilty to the charge which alleged that on January 9 at Crow Street, Georgetown, while being armed with a cutlass, he robbed Elaine Ariel of $70,000. Police prosecutor San Singh objected to bail based on the fact that the defendant is known to the police and was recently charged, as well as the penalty the offense attracts. He was remanded until January 21. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. Rajesh Lakan will now tell you what the people say on this week's Hot Topic. On this week's edition of What the People Say, citizens share their views on the possible snap elections in 90 days after the passage of the confidence motion that was declared valid by the Speaker on December 21. My general thoughts for snap elections would be um, I'm prepared, I have my ID card and everything and if the need arises for me to vote, I'd be willing to vote. But I'm not voting according to race, I'm voting according to issues and I think that um, as long as I find a party who can satisfy what I expect in governance, then I'll vote. So um, if they're going to host the snap elections, then they have to now let the public know what are their intentions, um, what they want to do for the country, and um, what measures will be put in place to benefit the citizens. Ooh, well, um, I really have nothing to say on that at the moment. Nothing to say. The court have to do whatever they have to do, and that's it. Snap elections can be it's a little, um, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of delicate situation because I don't think both parties are, or most parties are not fully prepared because the time and to get the machinery and so in place may be kind of a little difficult. Maybe four months could be more acceptable and I think that um, in the context of the um, what's going on right now, before not to divulge too much because I don't want to appear one side or the other. But being mutual, a mutual person, I do believe that um, the, the, the best, God's best will be done, and whatever you know, the rule of the law says, well, so be it. Yeah, we got to wait for see on GCOM, how GCOM run, what GCOM saying. This is the most. Okay, we got an election, the most you could do, um, we got, we got, we got to come out and vote, and whatever it is, and we got people of faith. If I'm prepared for a stamp election, well, I can't tell, man. It's difficult. We wasn't expecting this, so, but we got to be prepared. If it does well, got to happen, it got to happen. You understand? Yeah. But he wasn't prepared for it. Whatever is best for the country, um, I'm ready for that. 
I believe they should follow the right the, um, what's in the what's in the constitution. That's right, and not take you know what other countries say and stuff. It's just right is right, wrong is wrong. That's why I, I, I go by. So whatever is in this constitution, that's what I think they should go by. For MTV News updates, I'm Rajesh Lakan. Coming up after the break, MTV Sport Update and more. Stay with us. Gaffools proudly presents the perfect block made by the most technologically advanced concrete block making machine in sizes 4 and 6 inches. Perfect because it's the right ratio of cement and sand with sifting added for greater strength. It's stress tested independently by the UG Civil Engineering Department and it's cured for longer life. It's now available at a lower price with a 12.5% discount. The perfect block from Gaffools setting a new benchmark. Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. On windows and doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and Ultra Lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to the MTV Sport Update. Big names are included in the Guyana Hockey Training Squad, selected for the Indoors Series scheduled for Toronto, Canada from March 22 to 24. Both the male and female national teams have been invited by Hockey Canada to compete in a four-team competition in preparation for the 2020 Indoor Pan American Cup. The GHB has already kicked off its 2019 national program of activities with the Indoor Developmental Men's Team Tour of Trinidad and Tobago, where they placed fourth in the Ventures and third in the UB Indoors. Some members of the Indoor Developmental Men's Team that competed in the Ventures and UB tournaments have indicated that they are unavailable for squad selection due to their academic commitments leading up to CSEC examinations. The female squad includes Leticia Chung, Minsodia Culpepper, Nicole Eastman, Marisha Fernandes, Marzana Fitku, Trisha Woodruff, Alyssa Javier, Gabriella Javier, Abosaid Kadogan, Madison Fernandes, Brianna Gordon, Makeda Harding, Sarah Klotke, Jessica Mittelholzer, Deisia Woodruff, Kizia Chinian, 
Takesha DeLeon, Donielle Nurse, Mariah Sigobin, Charlia Webb, Anissa Permal, Kenesha Williams, Julia Gavaya, Candice Glenn, Bushani Kaladin, and Akiba Singh. The male squad includes Medroy Scotland, Michael Hing, Stephen Javier, Mark Sargent, Kareem McKenzie, Meshach Sargent, Robert Franz, Rayon Branford, Andrew Stewart, Jamarj Asana, Aroidi Branford, Leon Bacchus, Taif Sared Garnett, Shamir Garnett, David Williams, Paul Danrad, J.L. Gaskin, Omar Hopkinson, Dominic Allen, Stephen King, Hilton Chester, Hilmar Chester, and Troy Hodge. Chelsea Griffith, your reporter for MGV's Sports Update. Guyanese cricket enthusiasts shared their views of disappointment towards the selection of the West Indies squad for the upcoming Wisden Trophy Test Series, which include just one Guyanese cricketer. I think it's unfair for the Guyanese cricketers because they did well in these four-day matches. And just to see maybe one Guyanese in the team, it's, it's not fair. It's not fair at all because I don't know how they are selecting this team on what. You know, if it's performance or by a country or, or, or who, which minister or which government you, 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 you know, you're affiliated with. But I don't like the team, to be honest. It's, it's bias. It's not nice. I think they did. selected their bad job. And they're playing all the match in, in Barbados, uh, Darn Sammy Stadium and um, Pavin Richard. No Guyanese. And Guyanese four-time champion and only one select. I think the, the Guyana cricket board, I know they should have got a meeting or something about it. The rest of selected them. Let them know what's going on, how the people feel in Guyana about it. You have a four-time champion and only one selected alone from Guyana. Guyanese, I mean, they have some of them playing good right now, like um, not Johnson, the wicked keeper guy. Then they had Bishu and Pomal around for years. They always bowl good, so I don't know what bowlers the West Indies wanted or whatever. We are we, sometimes we find people who we think is not deserving to be there, but they're they're there. We got a chairman of selector, and we got we got um, a Guyanese who is on the selection panel, and I think these guys are supposed to, you know, be more um, professional and um, and see who is the fittest person to choose. So I didn't feel too upset about the, about the situation, but I, I think more Guyanese should have been on the squad. Okay, it's quite interesting that we only have one Guyanese in the squad for the upcoming um, test series against England because we've been dominating in the four-day cricket for four years now. We're on the fifth year. And I know the reason for this tournament, one of the reasons for this tournament is to select the test squad. So how exactly are we selecting guys without using this as, a, um, as their merit, as their way to merit the squad? I'm actually um, disappointed that Kimo Paul didn't make the squad because he's been performing really well. But let's see what happens. It's a new team. They have a new assistant coach. So um, I wish them all the best. Yeah. I feel a bit disappointed, you know, because um, right now again, I get a lot of young talents right now, so um, I feel you should give um, Chandi Bahir much a break and um, Kimo Paul also. Guinea's Greatest of the Streets Football Championships returned for its 10th year, and the West Demerara East Bank Zone will be the first to kickstart the action tomorrow at the Portron Market Tarmac West Bank Demerara. This will be the fifth year for this zone hosting the championships. Furthermore, it was noted that record entries have been received after over 35 bidding for the grand cash prize of $500,000 and a spot in the national playoffs. Usually the Georgetown zone kicks off the championships, but the organizers decided to make a change and allow Georgetown, the most supported zone, to be the final leg before the national playoffs. The opening night will have eight matches commencing from 18 hours. The other match nights are January 25, February 1, 6 and 8, with the final set for February 16. The runners-up will pocket $250,000, while the third and fourth place finishers will receive $200,000 and $100,000 respectively. Last year's showstoppers got their third straight title when they topped ESPN 3-0 in the final. 
Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MTV's Sports Update. The Georgetown Softball Cricket League Incorporated and Regal Stationery and Computer Center Cricket Competition are slated to kick off on Sunday with matches at several venues in the city. The tournament will be played in the open and over 40 categories with no entrance fee required. The organizers ask that all teams be fully uniformed and submit a list of no more than 15 players and contact information when registering. Cash and trophies will be up for grabs and the first eight teams in each category will be accepted. The tournament will be played on a round-robin format using white balls. The first ball is expected to be hit at 9 hours 30. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MTV's Sports Update. Fast bowler Ollie Stone has been ruled out of England's tour of the West Indies because of a back injury. The 25-year-old Warwickshire bowler has sustained a bone stress injury to the left lower back and will return home for further tests this week. England will call up a replacement for the three-test series which starts in Barbados on January 23. Stone made his one-day international debut in Sri Lanka in October but has yet to play a test. He was not part of the squad for England's first warm-up game against the Cricket West Indies residents and had scans on the injury on Wednesday. Stone previously spent just over a year out after rupturing the anterior cruciate ligament in his right knee while celebrating the wicket of Moin Ali while playing for Northamptonshire. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. In the region, a car bomb explosion has killed at least nine people in the Colombian capital, Bogota, the country's defense ministry says. The blast happened outside a school for police cadets in the south of the city. 54 people were reportedly injured in the blast. Witnesses say a car entered the school compound and when it was stopped by guards at a checkpoint, the driver accelerated and hit a wall at which point the car exploded. They say that it happened just after a ceremony at which officers were being promoted. Among those injured are a Panamanian and an Ecuadorian national. On the international scene, U.S. President Donald Trump has postponed House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's upcoming trip to Brussels, Afghanistan, and Egypt, citing the government shutdown. I'm sure you would agree that postponing this public relations event is totally appropriate, Trump said in a letter. Pelosi urged Trump on Wednesday to postpone his State of the Union address, citing the political deadlock. Trump's move came on the 27th day of a partial U.S. government shutdown. The Republican president wants $5.7 billion of congressional funding to build a wall on the U.S.-Mexico border, but Democrats have refused. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange, closing prices for trading session 808. Let's turn our attention to the Demora Harbour Bridge and the Burbies River Bridge schedules.
that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Jagdi accuses president of misleading the nation on agreement made during their meeting. Private sector commission says JICA must be ready to hold a snap elections. PPP plans to repeal all legislation passed after December 21, once victorious in snap elections. And in sport, Guyanese cricket enthusiasts upset over lone Guyanese selection in West Indies test squad to play England. Catch our rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Lashona Gomes Cornelius. Good night.